five or ten years from now, we'll have somewhere between 20,000 and 100,000 satellites orbiting Earth. At the end of 2022, countries had a total of 6,118 active satellites orbiting the planet, an increase of nearly 2,000 satellites in just one year. That is 30% increase from the last three years. The modern world requires a lot of moving parts to function. Connectivity rules the day, and a large part of what powers it lurks in the Earth's orbit. Satellites serve many purposes, from scientific research to communications. Annually, many more satellites are launched to surround the Earth. Satellites serve a vital function for humanity and are integral to the functioning of modern society. Many of the needs and challenges imposed by the requirements for modern society rely heavily on the functions of the satellites orbiting the Earth. So, how many satellites are in orbit right now? As of January 2022, there are 8,161 satellites in orbit around the Earth. This is a staggering amount of objects in orbit. The more shocking part is that only roughly half of them are active. Of the countries launching satellites, the United States takes the top slot. The recesses of space hold over 3,000 of the satellites the United States has launched. This comes as no surprise given the country's status as one of the leaders in space exploration. The closest competitor in terms of launches is China, which has 541 satellites in orbit currently. There isn't quite as much international participation as one would think. Countries with the means to launch objects into space do so. But what are the satellites used for? Over 8,000 satellites are in space, and they serve a variety of uses. The lion's share of satellites is in the commercial sector, where they act as means of communication and navigation. Communication satellites provide a point of contact, whereby devices like cell phones, modems, and IoT can all effectively work. Some of these communication satellites also deliver television signals. They provide HD video to a home-mounted dish with minimal lag time. More recent developments have led to Starlink's deployment of multiple satellites to provide wireless broadband internet to users in more remote areas. It doesn't have the same adoption rate as the more conventional cable and DSL broadband connections, though. They launch other satellites for navigation purposes, which offer real-time GPS functionality to standalone devices and mobile phones. Imaging is also another consideration. Satellites can carry an array of high-powered cameras to more accurately envision the United States. So, what drives space's growth? There has been a marked increase in satellite launches due to the development of the CubeSat. CubeSats have been around since 1999, developed at California Polytechnic State University. NASA has taken a special interest in the CubeSat, as they are far smaller than traditional satellites. Multiple CubeSats can be deployed in a single launch, carrying a multitude of scientific instruments, given the smaller footprint. The vast majority of the increase is due to SpaceX's Starlink network, which offers broadband, satellite-based internet services. SpaceX now regularly launches more than 50 satellites at a time on its Falcon 9 reusable rocket. An amazing achievement. And with launches happening as frequently as every week, the Starlink network now has more than 4,000 satellites in orbit. In addition, SpaceX is seeking to vastly expand that network, with plans for an additional 30,000 satellites. Amazon has steered in the same direction with its project Keeper. Keeper is meant to fill the same sort of niche as Starlink, providing low-cost broadband to those in areas that aren't covered. Starlink and Amazon are among the few massive companies seeking to launch tens of thousands of satellites into orbit over the next few years. Finally, the challenges of space. Despite the growth of launchable devices in space, there are some troubles posed to the burgeoning market. They are as follows. 1. Space trash. Between space missions and satellite launches, there is a lot of junk in orbit. Space trash refers to any man-made object left in orbit. Removing the trash isn't a simple proposition because there are thousands of abandoned satellites. The threat posed to space infrastructure 
is from the possibility of collisions. An errant abandoned satellite could very easily take out a key piece of infrastructure. One potential solution to space trash is to nudge objects further out of orbit. With 23,000 pieces of abandoned equipment, this is no easy task. Another solution would be to guide the objects to a decaying orbit where they could land unimpeded in one of the oceans. While this is perhaps more viable than nudging, it still presents certain ecological dangers for the ocean. Tens of thousands of spacecraft are a whole order of magnitude larger than occasional spacecraft being recovered from the ocean. 2. Foreign Bodies There is a multitude of objects in space that could wreak havoc on the network of functional satellites in orbit. Foreign bodies refer to objects from space, like asteroids, for example. It is impossible to predict the conditions of rogue asteroids, or even elements like the weather of space. Phenomena like solar winds or flares could readily reduce functionality or wipe out the infrastructure in orbit. Concerns arise especially given the development and deployment of more man-made objects in space. Greater area saturation in Earth's orbit gives more targets of opportunity while posing severe risks to communications and navigation systems. 3. Kessler Syndrome Imagine a tidal wave of trash and debris sweeping over vital infrastructure and you're not too far off from the Kessler Syndrome. Kessler Syndrome is a scenario in which the cascade of space trash and other debris starts to cause collisions in low Earth orbit. The term was coined in 1978 when the saturation of satellites in Earth's orbit was not nearly as bad as it is now. It has gained more prominence in recent years due to our reliance on satellites. A torrent of debris and space trash could effectively wipe out a good chunk of the orbiting infrastructure. 4. Satellite Jammers This is more of a temporary risk than a permanent one, but satellite jamming could serve to cripple a country. Satellite jammers are land-based devices. They are a recent development. These serve as a form of informational warfare and could block out communications, navigation, and a whole host of other data streams. These satellite jammers don't inherently damage satellites, but they make it impossible to receive the signals that are beamed back. Russian military forces developed and deployed the first viable models of satellite jammers in 2019. The United States has also joined the arms race, with the Space Force developing their own jammer. Looking ahead, the satellite landscape is poised for continued growth and evolution. Advancements in technology, such as smaller and more efficient satellites, reusable launch vehicles, and better space traffic management, will play a vital role in shaping the future of satellite deployment. And there you have it, fellow space enthusiasts. The number of satellites orbiting Earth is a dynamic and ever-changing figure, driven by the advancements of science and industry. As we continue to explore and innovate, let's keep our eyes on the sky and anticipate the exciting developments that lie ahead. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more cosmic explorations. Until next time, stay curious.